Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So uh, recently, a fellow YouTuber and friend of mine by the name of Hamish Hodder put up a video reacting to uh, stock market TikTok content. Now, uh, I've personally found that video really entertaining and I basically want to do the same thing in this video. So uh, we know from Monish Parai that we should shamelessly clone the best ideas of the great investors. In this video, I'm going to shamelessly clone the best ideas of the great YouTubers uh, in the finance world. So that's the plan for today's video. Uh, we're going to scroll TikTok through hashtag stock talk, hashtag money talk, uh, hashtag stocks, hashtag invest, hashtag entrepreneur, and we're going to see what comes up. Uh, judging from Hamish's video, we're going to see some good stuff, we're going to see some bad stuff, and we're going to see some straight up horrendous advice as well. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on all of that in this video. Now, before we get into the TikTok content for today, uh, we do have a sponsor for this video, and today's sponsor is Hatch. Now, uh, Hatch have been a long-time sponsor of the channel at this point, and they have been my personal broker of choice for uh, me as a Kiwi here in New Zealand making my overseas uh, US investments. Now, I initially switched across to Hatch basically just purely because of fees. Hatch have really knocked down a lot of the barriers to entry for New Zealanders to get into the US stock market. Previously, uh, you were pretty much forced to pay like 90 US dollars a trade to do that through one of the big banks. You can now do those same trades for three US dollars in Hatch. Now, one of the really cool things that Hatch have been working on behind the scenes recently is uh, the upcoming launch of kids accounts, which as the name suggests, you can set up for your kids or for your niece or nephew or whoever it might be. And it's going to allow you to invest even very small amounts of money with extremely low fees, as low as 50 US cents per trade. Uh, there's no subscription fees, nothing like that, just pure, really small brokerage uh, whenever you buy and sell shares. So that if you want to buy shares for uh, a young kid who you want to set up, uh, you know, compounding for really early, uh, you can buy shares, let them compound for 15, 20 years, maybe when they go to university or whatever it might be, uh, and it's going to have as much money sitting in there to compound as possible with really low fees kind of on the front end. Now, the official sort of public launch date for kids' accounts through Hatch is the 1st of March, but a little birdie has told me that, in fact, it will be going live on the Hatch website as soon as the 24th of February. So if you're interested in getting in early and setting up one of those kids' accounts, head over to Hatch on the 24th of February and you'll be able to do exactly that. Now, if you're interested in getting started with Hatch, you'll need to head to the link hatch.as forward slash investing with Tom. If you head to that link, deposit 100 New Zealand dollars into your new Hatch account, you'll get a additional $20 top up so that you can get started investing with a little bit more money. Okay, let's get straight into the TikToks. Now, I'm going to start off with hashtag stocks. And just one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these TikToks will have background music. So for YouTube purposes, if there is background music, I'm probably going to have to mute that out, but I'll try and sort of talk and tell you what's going on. Uh, most of them should be pretty obvious. A lot of these TikToks tend to have like text, which says exactly the same thing as what the person's saying in the video. Uh, but nonetheless, if there's no sound coming from the TikTok, you know what's going on. So uh, let's jump straight into it with hashtag stocks and see what we can find. Part owner in Apple. Okay, you can look up dividend paying companies. You get a portion of the profits depending on how much you invest. Passive income. Okay, so that's actually uh, a reasonable start. I was expecting worse. <laughs> so uh, yeah, when you buy shares, you become an owner in a business. That's exactly what buying shares on the stock market is. Uh, and some of those companies pay dividends from which you can earn uh, passive income. So anytime that uh, the company makes profits, they can pay that out to you as a shareholder and you can earn income from that. Now, uh, one thing I would keep in mind is that you don't have to invest in dividend paying companies in order to make money. Uh, that's kind of a little bit of a pet peeve of, my, of mine that some people maybe only invest in dividend paying companies. Uh, there's multiple ways you can make money from investing in stocks, especially ones that don't pay dividends. Now, uh, anytime that a company earns money, I think the process, in my mind at least, should be saying what is the best possible thing that we can do with that cash for the benefits of our shareholders. Now, uh, if that means paying dividends out, great. But firstly, I think a lot of companies should be looking at 
Uh, can they invest that cash within the business in order to grow faster than they otherwise would have been able to? So with a business like Facebook, for example, they can uh, invest a dollar of cash flows and with that dollar, they can produce sort of uh, 20 or 30 cents in recurring earnings from that dollar of investment each and every year. And that's really, really valuable. They're getting a 30% return on that reinvested capital. Now, if they pay that capital out to me as a shareholder, that's something that I'm going to struggle to do is to earn 30% on it, at least rely. Reliably. Uh, so that's a situation where a company that doesn't pay dividends can actually uh, still provide really good returns. So they can grow, the share price tends to increase as they grow their earnings over time, uh, and that's another way that you can benefit as an owner in a business. You're going to turn $100 into a million dollars in one year just by doing this. We're gonna what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to trade options in the stock market oh with boy. proper risk management and trading large companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Tesla, Amazon, and so on. No penny stocks, no small stocks. We're going to trade large companies and we're going to aim for 20% return every single week. In the options world, week. it is very doable to do it. So what we're going to do is $100 turns into 120 then 144 then 172 by week four doing 20% consistent gains. And by the end of the year, a million dollars in your account. This is very doable, but you have to learn how to trade options with proper risk management. And I'm here to teach you strategies. Okay, I'm just going to stop it there. <laughs> so keep in mind that Warren Buffett, the best investor literally in history, has made about 20% a year over a 50 you know, plus year career, probably much longer than that at this point. So to say that you can reliably you know, earn 20% a week with proper risk management strategies uh, is just it's just garbage, frankly. You can't earn 20% a week. Uh, maybe you can do it here and there, but you're either going to have to employ extremely risky strategies where it's likely that uh, you're going to lose a lot of money and you're just going to go backwards rather than trying to go forward. So look, investing is very basic. I put this on a Twitter just a few days ago saying uh, invest. good investing is simple but not easy. And the idea basically is that we buy good companies at reasonable prices, we hold them over the long term, and our net worth, our wealth sort of grows as those companies become larger and more profitable over time. And that's about it. So that's about the most reliable way of getting ahead. There is um, value investing is quite hard to beat uh, and options is not the way to do it. Okay, so for these next couple of TikToks, we're going to jump across to hashtag stock talk and see what uh, hashtag stock talk has to offer. So uh, let's get into the first one. Five stocks guaranteed to blow up under a dollar. Okay, here we go. We're about to get rich. Genesis Healthcare. What? Okay, um, that TikTok was literally just uh, naming five stocks under a dollar. Now, a couple of things here. So, like I mentioned in the last TikTok, investing is really basic when you get down to the to the core of it. Uh, we're trying to buy good businesses at reasonable prices and uh, yeah, just putting up a bunch of random stocks that you think are going to go up for whatever reason without offering any justification as to why they should go up or why um, you know they're undervalued at today's price or whatever it might be is just ridiculous. Um, the other thing I just want to mention here is the $1 part. I think um, a lot of people can sort of realize that seeing a video like that, that where someone just puts up a few random stocks and says they're going to go up is like, that makes no sense. Um, the, the bit that a lot of people do struggle with though is the $1 part. A lot of people uh, really think that because um, shares have sort of a low dollar price amount on them for the individual share and you can buy a lot more shares with $1,000 as an example, that that makes that stock cheaper than uh, shares that trade at say $100 a share. And that's just simply not true and it's not the right way to look at it. Now, uh, the way that you should be looking at any company, any investment before you buy into it is looking at uh, what sort of ownership percentage you're going to get. And you should kind of be valuing things on like a whole company basis, on a market capitalization or an enterprise value type you know, metric. Now, uh, you can have two companies, which uh, if you were to buy all the shares and the whole company, if you were to buy the entire thing, might both cost you say $10 million as an example. Now, uh, if one of those companies is trading at a dollar a share and one of those companies is trading at $10 per share, that simply means that the overall $10 million pie has just been sliced into a different number of pieces. Now, the fact that you can get 
uh, you know, some of those shares for a dollar and shares of the other company for ten dollars is absolutely meaningless. Both of those companies overall is worth, are worth ten million dollars, and if you put into and if you put say a thousand dollars into the one dollar stock and a thousand dollars into the ten dollar stock, those are equal kind of ownership percentages in the company. So, just because Berkshire Hathaway trades at say three hundred thousand US dollars a share for the A shares, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they're super expensive or overvalued. And just because you find some penny stock that trades for less than a dollar, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's cheap or undervalued. Okay. This is literally just music and like naming three stocks. Are you joking? <laughs> okay, just look at my answer for the last TikTok that I watched. Uh, you can't just put three stocks out there with no reasoning behind why you think they're good investments or not. Uh, that's all I have to say on that. Let's get to the next one. Okay, I think I've had about as much hashtag stock talk as I can handle. So uh, let's go over to hashtag money talk uh, and see what's happening in that uh, part of the world on TikTok. Okay. How to find stocks before they blow up. We want to Google Finviz. Website with a stock screener. Okay, they want stocks under $15. Oh my god. Okay, and they're, <laughs> they're putting in some other settings around moving averages and some other technical stuff. Relative volume, float. Under 50 million. List of 70 stocks. Follow for more what? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, man, these things are just ridiculous. Like, there's... Again, there's... I know I'm, I'm going to have to mute the audio on this one because there was music in it, but it was literally saying, go to this website, run the stock screen. This gives you a list of stocks by industry and price. And that was like, then it was like, follow me for more. <laughs> this gave absolutely no reasoning on why you should listen to this person in, in any way. So, and this is really winding me up. I really, <laughs> I really didn't, I really didn't expect this when I started uh, recording this video, but man, there's some wild stuff on here. Okay, let's go to the next one. Going to invest in GameStop. Well, why? The stock doubled in a week. It's going up. Do you know why it went up? It's basically just explaining the Wall Street bets situation with the short squeeze. You can't just listen to anyone on the internet, but it's going up. <laughs> Oh man, this is so accurate. I, I see this all the time. I'm in a couple of different Facebook groups around investing and uh, I see stuff like this go on all the time, even from people that are ha have been in the investing game before the whole GameStop situation. And a lot of these people just buy stocks because they see them going up or they just sell stocks bef because they see them going down. Like I'm in a group at the moment where I'm starting to see people talk about you know, what's wrong with Tesla. I, I'm thinking of selling out a Tesla because the stock price hasn't moved in a month and, and stuff like this. And, you know, these are often the same people that are buying into these same stocks just because they're going up and, and this sort of thing. They're just purely investing on momentum. And I think that's a really dangerous strategy because prices move around really fast. And what can happen is when stocks go up, you can be you know, feeling great, feeling on top of the world, you've done really well on some particular investment that you own. Uh, but when stocks go down, you really, uh, that's really going to test you if you don't understand what you truly own. If you don't know what the fundamental value of the business is, and you own a stock that's all of a sudden down 50%, uh, and you're just purely a momentum investor, that's potentially going to cause you to sell some stocks at uh, prices that don't make sense, at prices that are irrational, and that are, you know, really underestimating the true value of the business and that's not a good place to ever be in so please don't invest in stuff just because it's going up and don't sell stuff just because it's going down understand the true intrinsic value of the business and buy or sell appropriately uh, based on your understanding of that company's future trajectory and future cash flows
Okay, this TikTok stuff has really started to test my patience. I feel like a bit of a <laughs> crumpy old man uh, scrolling through some of these videos. So let's do one last uh, TikTok on hashtag money talk and then let's call it a day for this one. Your daily Starbucks isn't the reason you can't buy a house. $30 a week for Starbucks, $1,500 a year. Would barely make a dent in a down payment. If it brings you happiness, it fits into your budget, buy it. I actually don't mind this one. You know, a lot of people, um, a lot of personal finance YouTubers and so on, I think uh, are often kind of stick this for these small little expenses. And I certainly agree that the Netflix subscriptions and Disney Plus subscriptions and, you know, occasional coffees and that sort of thing certainly add up. Um, there's no denying that. Like, these things cost money. And if you have a lot of these little things, then they do add up over time. Um, but I've got a couple of videos on sort of personal finance and saving money in general. And in pretty much all of those, I tell people to focus on the large stuff, the large expenses in your life, the fancy cars, uh, the houses that are, you know, well above what you can afford or, or really stretching you financially. And I think those are the areas where you can generally make a lot of ground on, you know, trying to save more money and so on. And there's also sort of a limit to how much you can actually reduce your expenses in your budget. At some point, if you really want to prepare pal ahead financially you've also got to do uh, what you can to try and increase your income whether that's some sort of side hustle or getting some sort of new qualification that's going to help you move up at your job or whatever it might be so um, although the Starbucks is of the world those Starbucks type expenses certainly add up uh, I think you can make a lot of progress by focusing on uh, the big stuff in your financial life Okay, I'm going to stop it there. I think that is about as much uh, finance and stock market and money TikTok as I can possibly handle. So I'm going to call it there. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like this style of video, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Um, they're pretty easy to put together. So I, you know, I'm happy to make more of these in the future if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, again, if you're interested in the Hatch offer, hatch.as forward slash investing with Tom is the place to go. Go get your free $20 when you start up your new Hatch account. But that's all for me today and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.